Okay. Hey guys, uh, Alex Ferrero here, and today I have a very special guest, Aaron Chen. So Aaron has, did, did I pronounce that right? Like Aaron Chen? Aaron Chen, yeah, that's right. That's right. So Aaron, um, Aaron has um, a very, very engaged YouTube channel. Um, so he's, he's an expert in affiliate marketing. He's an expert in um, basically creating YouTube videos and then positioning them so people can actually find uh, your videos and then pretty much utilizing that exposure to to generate leads and sales pretty much for every business so what we'll um what we'll cover today is a lot of stuff that is like pretty much everyone can utilize to you know to sell their products and services whether it's like generating leads or getting sales for um if you're selling like information products or or trainings um pretty much like growing your sales with YouTube and then some of the affiliate marketing as well, because Aaron is, um, is very good at that, uh, as well. So Aaron, very excited to have you. Um, so yeah, if you, if you, if you can tell us like pretty much about your like background, like how did you start with, uh, like internet marketing, with affiliate marketing, all of this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm, I'm 37 years old. I look, I look a lot younger than, than I am. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think I'm like, you know, 21 years old. It's really mm -hmm. funny. I get all these funny comments, but um, I've always been a corporate guy. I've been in corporate sales for 15 years. And in 2009, um, I wanted to quit my job and I wanted to go online just like a lot of people do. You know, I, I saw the, the internet age coming. So I was very, very excited and mm -hmm. I quit my job. I had a bit of savings and I got online and I started buying a lot of courses because that, that's how you learn. You know, you buy courses, yeah. you learn the skills and then you try it out. But unfortunately, um, it was very, very difficult for me to succeed. So I failed for a long time, 2009 to 2016. Um, I had spent more than 90,000 US dollars, you know, on courses, seminars, different business models, trying mm -hmm. everything under the sun, couldn't make it work. Right. And um, ran out of money, um, had to rebuild my career. Um, and then when did I rebuild my career? Around uh, seven years ago, I, I joined another company and mm -hmm. then I would come home from the office every single day and just really try and figure it out. And mm -hmm. then what happened was in 2016, finally had a breakthrough and my breakthrough really was, was two things. Number one was my traffic strategy, which is YouTube, which we'll talk about. Um, you mm -hmm. can ask whatever questions you want. And then the second thing was focusing on one particular business model, which was affiliate marketing. Uh, mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know what affiliate marketing is, is all it is, is finding digital products that people want, finding them, finding the audience, connecting them together, making a mm -hmm. sale, and that's how you make a commission. And so that's how everything changed for me. Um, and then in April, 2019, uh, tripled my old corporate income. I left my corporate job. Um, and now I do this full time. And I, I teach hundreds of people all over the world how to do exactly what, what I do. And that's, that's, that's my story. That's a quick version of it. Yeah. Oh, awesome, man. And so for you, so you mentioned you've been struggling for like how many years you've been struggling? Like um, I was struggling for eight years, eight years, man. Jeez. It's a long time. And so yeah. what, what do you think? Like, so, cause you know, I, I see this a lot too. And you know, for me personally, I, I yeah, I might have struggled less than you, <laughs> you know, like maybe like two, like two, three years, you know, till it, till it started to get like a uh, good traction, but it's still, you yeah. know, um, so fr from your perspective, um, it, it's a lot of time, you know, and, yeah. You know, what, what would be, what would be like, for example, what would you tell yourself, like after all of this, you know, kind of like learning curve that you had, what would you tell like, you know, the younger version of yourself to do or not to do? Like if you had a chance. So the, the, the main thing was I was stuck on one traffic source for, for, for too long. And mm -hmm. The problem is, is that with the problem with affiliate marketing specifically, and I'm not, I'm not so so sure about e-commerce because that's where mm -hmm. you specialize, right? But the problem with affiliate marketing is the courses out there are not very good. Most of the courses, in fact, are very very bad, and they all teach you how to buy solo ads. And solo ads, all that is, is is email traffic. You buy email traffic from other marketers, right? And so I I stayed in that space for too long because that's what everybody was talking about. So I spent more than thirty thousand dollars on solo ads. And I could never make it profitable. So if I could have a time machine and go back in time and say, you know, Aaron, you know, you need to 
something, I would have changed that strategy. I would have tried something else. I would have done YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or mm -hmm. SEO or something different, but I didn't. I just stayed on solo ads for so long and mm -hmm. wasted so much money there. So that's the first thing I would have done. The second thing that I would have done is I would have told myself to start to build out my own stuff. That's so, so important, right? Because mm -hmm. the problem with affiliate marketing is what a lot of the gurus like to do is, and, and, and now I'm totally against this, right? Is they like to sell uh, done for you stuff, right? Quote unquote, done for you marketing machines. Now, marketing machines don't work in affiliate marketing. They might make you a couple of sales here and there, right? Because of course, um, you know, obviously the, the videos are good and the system looks nice and stuff like that. But the problem starts when there are 10,000 affiliates using the same machine Mm -hmm. What happens? Your, your conversions drop, right? So it's a bit of a, it's a mirage. You know what I mean? So you get in, you make a couple of sales, you get excited and then you don't make any sales at all. And then you're confused. You're like, what's happening? So, so what, what was going on in the first eight years was I wasn't really learning marketing. I was just using other people's stuff and I was t uh, listening to them telling me what to do because I thought they were right when actually they were wrong. They were just trying to sell their systems to you. So those are the two main things that I would have gone, gone back and told myself. Change the traffic and build out your own stuff. And it's not difficult. You just have to learn how to do it and, and learn how to do it properly. That's, that's all it is. Yeah. This is, this is, this, these are very good insights. And so, um, yeah, I, like on one side, it's good if you stick to one platform, right? Like one source yeah. traffic because you're more likely to figure it out like over time. But on mm. the other side, as you said, it, it, this is like at the, you know, at the foundation, if it's like a failing, you know, like traffic source or, you know, it's, if you're just like too competitive, right? Just like too many people jump on the same opportunities, then it will be, you know, it will be difficult. So very, very good insights. And so, um, and so you, you discovered, so you discovered YouTube and what, yeah. what, what happened after that? Like, did you start like getting like traffic, like right away or? Your yeah. So, so, so that, that's a good question. So <laughs> when I started in 2009, um, I started YouTube and, and then this is the very interesting thing about YouTube, right? And a lot of people don't understand how YouTube really works. Right. I thought that all I had to do was make lots of videos every single day and just upload it onto YouTube. And so mm -hmm. for the first year, I made hundreds of videos. I just made random videos. I uploaded them onto YouTube um, and every single video got like maybe 30 views or something like that. So I wasn't generating many leads at all, but I was putting in all this effort, right? And then, so I thought, okay, I'm, I'm gonna quit YouTube and I stopped doing it. Um, and then it wasn't until 2016 that I realized that it wasn't that YouTube doesn't work. It was just that I didn't understand how to do it properly, right? And so, in 2016, what I did was I went out there, did a lot of research, and I basically found the top YouTube marketers. I bought all their courses. I learned everything, and, and everybody teaches it slightly differently. I learned everything, and then I started doing it, and then I started getting results, right? And the whole thing about YouTube is that there's a couple of things, okay? If you upload, even if you uploaded the best video in the world, right? You spent, I don't know, $5,000 on production. It was the most amazing video, but mm -hmm. people can't find your video then it's as good as useless, right? Because people can't find your stuff. It's like a needle in a haystack, right? But the trick is, is to basically make great videos, make them simple, uh, go after specific keywords um, that are not that competitive, and then do all the back end stuff to rank your video so that people find it when they type out a specific keyword phrase. So for example, if I was selling a weight loss product like um, you know, I wanted to teach someone how to lose weight in two weeks or something like this, that, right? This is, this is very competitive, right? So this is like real challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. That, I mean, so, so again, the, the niche is, is, is very important too. So if you went after a keyword like how to lose weight in two weeks, you probably wouldn't be able to rank for that keyword. Now, once you get to a certain stage in your YouTube career where your channel is very big, and you've got authority, it's a lot easier to rank for a keyword like that. But if you're just a beginner, you can't go after keywords like that. You have to go after much, much longer tail, what we call long tail keywords. Uh -huh, yeah. and, and you have to be a little bit clever. You can't go direct. You have to go, you have to go laterally. You have to think about, okay, well, what else do people that want to lose weight, what, what do they look for? They look for books on weight loss. They look for authors, they look for products. And so you can make keywords around those things mm -hmm. and they're less competitive. And so then you can start to rank for those things and slowly build up your authority of your channel. And then eventually 
YouTube will know what your channel is about and they'll be like, oh, okay, so Aaron Chen's all about weight loss. We're going to give him more authority. We're going to give him more, you know, SEO juice. That's what they call it, right? And then as you start to do it more and more and more and you do all the little tricks behind the scenes, your videos get higher rankings and, and that's kind of how it works. And then people start to find your stuff. So, um, and, and you have to learn how to do all that, obviously, but that's, that's kind of how it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And so over time, so you mentioned then, um, so for example, you do this, you do this like over time and then your channel gets more traction. So the more yeah. channel, the more, um, like the more traction your channel gets, the, the easier it is to, for you to rank your videos, basically. Yes, that's, that's one thing. Um, so, so basically your channel won't start ranking until you have at least 30 or 50 videos on your channel. Um, so that's what a lot of people don't get that. They think that you, you start a, a brand new channel, you upload five videos and they're meant to rank straight away. They won't because YouTube does, still doesn't know what your channel's about yet, right? The algorithm still trying to figure out what it's about. So, um, you have to do the right things on your, on your video and you have to do the right things off offline as well. Right. Hmm. Um, and you have to do it enough and consistently enough for the algorithm to be like, ah, okay you know, Alex's channel is about this and then slowly your videos start to rank and then you keep doing all the offline stuff to push it up and you, mm. the consistency is what builds that momentum and, and, and those rankings. And mm -hmm. if you look at all the big YouTubers out there, I mean, they come up with content every day, you know? Um, it doesn't mean that you have to come up with content every day, but it just goes to show that even the big guys, yeah. they're, they're, they're pumping it out and, that, and that's kind of how it works, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then the, there's two strategies with YouTube, which is really interesting. There's the, um, if, you, if you look at the, the PewDiePie's and the Casey Neistat's of the world who are like, you know, they've got like 20 million subscribers, right? That's mm -hmm. not the YouTube strategy that I use because it's almost impossible to do that. You know, YouTube has been around now for 15, 20 years. It's, it's very difficult to become a viral YouTube sensation in this day and age because there's just so much video out there, right? So instead, you need to be a ninja. You need to, you need to sort of go after, you know, lower tail keywords, longer tail keywords, be strategic um, where people are not really looking and then get your videos in there. And that's how you start to gain traction. So the idea is not to become an influencer. The idea is to get people to find your video, mm -hmm. um, get them to watch your stuff and then get them off the YouTube platform and get them into your sales funnel, build a relationship with them and do all the stuff that you need to do to sell your products. So, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, pretty so much, sorry. Go ahead. Pretty much it's like it's like not not quantity you would say, but more like quality. Especially if you're looking for like sales or you're looking to convert those people, not just getting like views. Pretty much, right? Yeah, like, it's not a, it's not about views or subscribers. Yeah, that's right. So a lot of people, and and that's the funny thing, right? So when people don't understand this kind of YouTube strategy, I'll get comments like, "Well, Aaron, you can't be that successful because you only have seventeen thousand subscribers." Now, even though I love my subscribers, I don't really care about them. In in, in actual fact, I don't care about the number of subscribers. Mm -hmm. Right? The number of subscribers doesn't have anything to do with how much money I'm making because. Mm -hmm. I've got so many videos out there ranking on the first page of YouTube that I care about how many leads I'm generating, not how many subscribers I have. Does that make sense? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. So, yeah. it's, so it's a completely different strategy. So people like PewDiePie and, and um, you know, all those big guys, they make money directly from YouTube. YouTube pays them a check every single month. YouTube doesn't pay me any money. I don't make money from YouTube. I use YouTube as a platform to mm -hmm. siphon people off that, that, the, the platform. And then I, I use those guys and I build a relationship and I do whatever I want with them somewhere else. That that's all you, it is. You don't monetize your channel basically. I, I, I do, but I mean, I just started doing it, but oh. the answer is no, actually, I don't really, I don't really monetize my channel. No. Oh, okay. That's, that's, yeah. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So for example, let, let's say, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of people in, in, um, in our audience, like they are, um, like they might have, like they might work with clients, you know. So, yeah. for example, they might do, like, let's say, Facebook advertising service for them or any other service. So, what would you do, like, if that was, for example, your goal? Okay, so your goal is to get clients for, um, let's say, like Facebook advertising services. Like, what what would you do in that case? Like, how would you approach kind of the content production? Like, what keywords you would go for? 
So, so it, it's, um, it, it really depends on the industry because there's so many industries out there, right? So um, currently I, I don't have an agency. I don't run an agency. What I do have is I have a program that teaches people how to do what I do. So if someone wanted to learn how to rank videos for their business and get more leads, I sell a program that teaches them how to do that. But if you were an agency and you were trying to build content out for a client, it really depends on the industry. So if it was like, um, you know, if it was, if it was dog training, for example, right? What, what, you, what the first thing that you would do is you would need to understand um, exactly what they're trying to sell, first of all. And then you would go after all the, the dog training keywords or the dog related keywords, do all the keyword research. And, and there's tons of, there's tons of free keyword tools out there. Keywords everywhere is one. I like um, Google keyword planner. There's so many out there and um, it does require research. It does require work. I mean, you know, making money online requires work, right? Um, finding the right keywords and then making videos on those keywords specifically and then doing the on what we call on page SEO. So making sure that YouTube knows what that video is about and then doing all the off page SEO to push that video up onto YouTube. And that, and that's all you would do really. And, but the thing is, is that if you were an agency doing this for someone on YouTube organically, it's a lot of work because you would have to shoot a lot of video and you would need a team behind the scenes to do all the back end stuff. So you could do that, but you would, you would, you would need to hire a couple of people to, in order for you to do that. If you ran an agency for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And how, how important is a description for, for YouTube videos? Um, it's important. It's yeah. important. So, yeah. So the, so the algorithm, um, yeah. So back in the day, um, people used to, to do what's called keyword stuffing. So that means that let's just say you were going after, um, how to stop your dog from peeing on the carpet, right? So what they would do is they would take that keyword and they would stick it in there 20 times into the description, right? That doesn't work because, um, you know, now YouTube is actually very, very advanced now, right? So mm -hmm. they know that people are trying to game the system. So it's not about keyword stuffing. It's about putting in the keyword just a couple of times mm -hmm. um, and making sure that it's in the title, it's in the description, it's in the tags, um, and then making sure that people watch your video. It, it, it's more about what they call session time. It's how much time people spend on your channel. So the more time that people spend on, the, on your channel, mm -hmm. the more YouTube thinks that people like your stuff and the higher your videos will rank. Okay. But it's not only that it's a, it's a combination of a lot of things. It's how many views are you getting? How many comments are you getting? How many likes are you getting? Are people sharing your videos? Are people subscribing to your channel? It's everything. So it's an, it's a holistic thing now. It's not just about views. It's not just, yeah, it's, it's everything. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's not that difficult to do if you understand how to do it, but, but, but because of the sophistication of the algorithm, um, they look at everything now, not just at one thing. So mm -hmm. cool. Awesome. And for affiliate marketing. So you, you, you started basically as affiliate marketer. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. So what kind of like offers, like what kind of like offers have you, have you focused on or what kind of like, if you were, if you were to do it like from, from scratch, would you do affiliate marketing or no? Um, yeah, I would do affiliate marketing 100% because it's the most straightforward business model out there. Honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, all you do is you find good products, you find mm -hmm. people and you, you join them together. Right. And all you have to get really good at is finding leads, finding traffic, mm -hmm. and then building a relationship with, with those, with those leads. Right. The problem with affiliate marketing is that a lot of people out there teach it the wrong way. What a lot of people will say, if you buy an affiliate marketing course, um, I don't want to mention any names or anything like that, but I know because I bought so many over the years, what they say is get a Facebook ad, find a great offer and send it directly and you're going to make money. That is the fastest way to go broke in affiliate marketing because nobody buys like that anymore, right? Internet marketing and affiliate marketing and offers have been around for so long, right? If you go, if you scroll through your Facebook uh, newsfeed, you'll just see ad after ad after ad after ad, right? Now, mm -hmm. if you have a picture that goes straight to a sales page, you're going to lose money unless you've done a really, really good job on your Facebook. And usually it's video that does very, very well actually on Facebook ads now, right? And mm -hmm. it's, about, it's about bringing them into your world and building a relationship with them before you recommend them a product. Or you have to optimize your sales page so well 
that you're getting sales on the front end um, that pays for your advertising so that you can spend more money on ads and then you you upsell them on the back end. Now, we're talking about very advanced stuff right now. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah but, but essentially, to keep it simple, if you send traffic straight to a sales page, you will lose money. There's, mm-hmm. there's, a, lot, there's a lot more to that than that. So with the, the way that I've developed my programs now is it's much more about how do you build a relationship with your audience before mm-hmm. you sell them something, before you recommend them something. And that's, and that, that's what really works today. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And then, um, so you kind of like evolved, right? So you started with affiliate marketing, promoting like other products, and then you decided to like focus on your own products. Yep. Yep, exactly. So, so um, I've got two programs now. One um, teaches people how to uh, find leads on YouTube for whatever business you want, MLM, affiliate marketing, even offline business. If you have a law firm or a chiropractor business, it will teach you how to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my signature program basically teaches people to do exactly what I do, how to mm-hmm build out a proper digital, you know, selling business. So how do you find good products? What products will get you the most profit? How do you build out a sales funnel? How do you um, capture leads? How do you communicate with those leads? Everything from start to finish. So that, that's, a, um, it's a, that's, the, that's my core program. Um, took me a long time to build out because there's just so much bad information out there. But when I finally figured out how to do it and, and teach it properly, um, yeah, I, I, I created that course. Um, it's actually, it's a pretty new course. It's, it's only been out for about three months now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's called, um, the invincible marketer. So mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's my main program. Yeah. Awesome. And then, uh, for the, um, basically for the, uh, information products, right. Mm-hmm. Um, cause a lot of, a lot of our audience as well, like they do like either e-commerce or, you know, drop shipping. And right. I always tell people like, if you, if you find a way like to, integrate you know information products into your bit and like if you analyze uh, i don't know if you're familiar with click funnels right sure um, so yep. click, click funnels is a software business yeah but at the core it is a pretty much information product business right they sell yep. courses they sell trainings yeah um, yeah and so that's how they you know pretty much like acquiring customers right so and I always tell people, like, even if they're like selling physical products, and for example, they decided to focus on a on a certain niche, then it it is like a very good idea to like identify if there's anything that you can like add to that business that is like information product. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, it has low um, it has low cost, right? You like you spend time once like producing it, then you can resell. Like margins are much higher than with physical products. Yeah, and, you know. Like I always recommend people to do that. So in terms of information products, what, what have been like the, the major lessons in terms of like getting people to um, like getting people to buy or like increasing your conversions? Okay. So, so there's a couple of things. Um, the first thing is that you should never ask, you should add value first and ask for the sale last. That's, mm-hmm. that's the number one principle. So that means that if you're selling a weight loss program, mm-hmm. you need to teach weight loss instead mm-hmm. of selling your product. Your product comes second, right? So mm-hmm. you add value and you don't, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to create one hour videos. All you need to do is just create short little two, three, four minute videos. You can mm-hmm. record your face, you can record your screen, but essentially what you're doing is you're branding yourself as the expert mm-hmm. and you're teaching people about the topic that they want to learn, right? Now, yeah. at the end of every video, all you say is, is, hey, listen, if you enjoyed this video um, and you want to find out where I learned how to do this, then you can click the link below and you can check out the program that, that taught me how to lose 30 pounds. And then they click on that and that is the affiliate offer, right? And if you just do that all through your sales funnel, Mm-hmm. Trust me when I say you will make money that way. The problem is, is that people are just too lazy to do that, right? They don't want to do that. They just want to buy Facebook ads and send them straight to the offer, right? But, but internet marketing doesn't work like that anymore, right? It's all about, and that's why you see people like Gary Vaynerchuk or, you know, Tony Robbins or uh, Dean Graziosi. I mean, these are some of the, the biggest gurus in the world. Why are they constantly coming out with content? Because that's the game, right? The game is to come out with free stuff to build an attraction and magnetism towards your audience. And then eventually they'll buy something. That's why I buy all of Gary Vaynerchuk's books 
or his courses and stuff like that because he you know I'm, I'm listening to his podcast all the time so I have a podcast as well right mm -hmm. so these are some of the different strategies that you use to build um, to build authority basically right to, mm -hmm. to, to build a relationship with with your your list and then when your list is ready to buy when your audience is ready to buy they'll buy, right? But they won't buy straight away because they don't know who you are. Why would they ever buy a weight loss program from you when they have no idea who you are? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like people don't understand that. They think that, oh, I just send traffic to a, a page and someone's going to buy a weight loss program. No, they're not. They're not going to do that. They would rather buy a weight loss program from someone that they know, like, and trust mm -hmm. that has spent time with them teaching them the skills rather than someone who they've just met one time mm -hmm. through a sales page. Does that make sense? Yeah, right. Yeah, so, definitely. yeah. So, so, so in uh, e-commerce, I think it's slightly different, but in affiliate marketing, it is very, very much, it, it's a, it's a people business. It's a contact sport, right? So you have to find a way to build a relationship, add value to your marketplace um, mm -hmm. by coming up with free content and then you back end them into the products that you're selling. And that's, 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 that, that's how it works. It's actually a very, very simple model. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of people, number one, don't know how to do it. And number two, aren't, aren't willing to do that. That's, that's just kind of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so that's, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I've seen, I've seen like, I don't know if you're familiar. Are you familiar with like Dr. Axe? Uh, Dr. Axe? No. So it's like huge company. So they basically grew the company like with content marketing. They have right. like a massive blog and stuff. And right. then on the back end of it, like, they're selling um, or they've been, they've been selling like pretty much they grew to like $50 million, like a year in revenue. Right. And this is physical products at the core. Like this is physical product. They sell like supplements and stuff. Now okay. it's called, I think it's called ancient nutrition. Okay. So <laughs> I mean like huge, huge, like fast, fast growing company. So they have, they had this like content marketing, like basically providing a lot of value. Then yeah. on the back end of it, like they had the information product. Um, it's kind of like showing people how to like, you know, the nutrition and stuff. And that was sold in a combination with physical products, which are right. the supplements. Right. So exactly what you're talking about. And a um, few more companies like Lady Boss. I don't know if you're familiar. Yep. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Exactly, exactly the same model. So they have the information product on the, on the front end, getting yep. people into the community, providing yep. them a value and then up selling a lot of like physical products on the back end. Yeah, yeah, totally. That, that, that's so, so that's, that's called the value ladder, right? So you get them in for something small um, and then you upsell your customers because now they trust you yeah. um, and you can offer them something of bigger value. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll buy, you know, there'll be a certain percentage of people that will buy. So whether that's a home study course or that's an event or, um, you know, people love events, right? So uh, if you want to hold an event, it just, it just really depends on what kind of entrepreneur you want to be. But, but lady boss, yeah, she's killing it. She's absolutely killing it. They're doing so well. Um, yeah. so yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome stuff, man. Um, so what, like, uh, let's say you have a challenge like to market some physical product. Let's say this is, um, I don't know, some gadget, like, would you utilize YouTube or like, would you stick with like paid advertising? like with, with Facebook or something? Yeah, so, um, okay, so with, with, with e-commerce, um, paid advertising is probably the best strategy, to be honest, because it's the most, it's the most direct, you know, um, you know, you send people directly to the picture on, on, you know, Google shop or Bing or whatever you're using. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, and then they'll buy or they won't buy. Um, you can do it with free strategies, like, like what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's competitive and it's a lot of work. That's the thing. So if you look at, you know, if someone was to review, you know, this, uh, for lack of a better example, you see that camera behind me there, that that's a Canon 200 D, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the very good channels. What they'll do is they will spend a lot of time and effort reviewing that camera. So it, that video might be like eight minutes long and they'll review the crap out of that camera and then they'll rank that video and then people will, will watch it and then they'll buy from their website. Now you can do that, but it's a lot of work. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it is possible. But I think that for physical products, um, paid advertising is faster, it's easier, and, and you get results. Yeah, you just get results quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In terms of like production of YouTube videos, do you have like any like tips or uh, like 
like for example how, how do you, how do you typically approach the production of your videos they do you just keep it simple and focus on the content on the value in uh, in the training in um, in videos or like do you think like the videos needs to be like fancy and uh yeah so um honestly for the first uh two years that i was um gaining traction on youtube i literally just took my iphone 5 this is the this is the iphone 10 now right but uh -huh. i was using my iphone 5 and i was just literally recording myself in my car driving on the way to work i was actually in my suit people could see me driving in my suit uh -huh. i got like a little a holder thing on on the top of my dashboard and I would literally hit record I would record it for 10 minutes or whatever it was and I would hit record and you should see all my old videos I don't even edit it out I don't edit me pressing the button on and off so you can actually see me pressing the the button on and off and it doesn't matter people don't care because what people care about is the content is the value right if your stuff is good um, it will convert anyway uh, it's only much much later on uh, that I started to have introductions and endings and I edit my videos now and stuff like that. So um, it doesn't matter at all. So that's what I, I, that's what I teach a lot of my students. A lot of people, they overthink it. They think like, oh, I need to have some, you know, massive production company. I have to have like amazing lighting and softbox lighting and all that stuff. And I got to have makeup on my face. And no, you don't. All you need is you need to make sure that people can see your face. They mm -hmm. can hear you and that your content is good and that's it. And you don't even have to edit anything out at all. And then uh, literally you can, you can just use your phone. So any, any phone, Huawei, Samsung, iPhone, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have a good phone, you can do YouTube videos. Yeah. Awesome stuff, man. Yeah, so pretty much like keep it simple. If you want to do something like do it, then, you know, then you can, oh, you can always do it better over time, right? That if you have like, yeah. you know, you, you can hire people to, to set up the studio for you and like you can always evolve with time, but just get it done. <laughs> get it. Yeah, just, just, just take action and get it done. I mean, this is what I always tell my, my people, right? It's like, it's better to have 100 crappy or okay videos out there than mm -hmm. 10 amazing videos because people aren't going to find your 10 amazing videos, but they're going to mm -hmm. find your 100 okay videos and mm -hmm. you're going to make a lot more money and make more sales doing it that way, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Right. So people freak out about it. They're like, oh, no, it has to be perfect. But the thing is, is that you're never going to be perfect until you start doing it first, because they're not going to buy from the version of you right now today. They're going to buy from the version of you later when you do it so much that you get so good at it that mm -hmm. now they're attracted to you, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, and the only yeah. way that you can do that is if you practice and you get the content out there. You should have seen my videos in 2009, Alex. They were so bad. It was so, so bad. But because I've been doing this for so long now, like I've done like, you know, a thousand five hundred plus videos easily. And so it, it's, it's a muscle, right? You just have to keep yeah. doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and you, and you just get better at it. So uh, yeah, that's, it's just, it's just practice. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, man. So yeah. how do people, how do people find, find your training and find your content? Obviously we'll, um, we'll link, we'll link your like YouTube channel below and probably the product, but overall, like if, if they want to just like go and check out your content. Great. Yeah. So all you need to do is just go to YouTube and you just type Aaron Chen. So A-A-R-O-N and then Chen is C-H-E-N. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've got two programs. Uh, my YouTube program is videoauthoritymastery.com. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to learn uh, affiliate marketing, uh, it's the, uh, theinvinciblemarketer.com. That's all it is. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, awesome. man. I mean, a lot of, a lot of the insights and just interesting to see how your like how your fast evolved and just shows, shows that like it takes time to, um, shows time to kind of, uh, you know, even like transition from, you know, you've been, you've been like consistent and persistent with it. Like a lot of people, they, you know, they work at like nine to five, they, they stuck, you know, with their jobs or maybe they don't like them. And yeah. Shows like that you've been consistent with it and it took you like so much time but you eventually succeeded and uh you know you do well with it uh, with with your business so so a lot of a lot of lessons just just in this by itself and a lot of great insights about the affiliate marketing uh youtube um some of the things like you know i i even like you know you told me okay so it's not about the subscribers it's about you know the uh, because you know like for example I know that, uh, you know, we, we make more than like more, you know, like probably all of the other guys, like in the same industry in terms of yeah. the, 
um, you know, with, with our business. And it's, it's not just subscribers. It's not just like uh, how many people, how, how many people know about, how many people know about you. It's a very good insights, man. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's 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 you know the thing is when people don't understand a strategy, they they think that it's about um you know I call it vanity metrics, right? Vanity yeah, metrics. Yeah. That means it's just like how many likes you have, how many subscribers that you have. But if they don't understand what you're doing, then they don't understand what you're doing, right? Because it's not my. 17,000 subscribers that buy my stuff. It's the people that find my videos and get on my email list mm -hmm. that buy my, that buy the products that I recommend. So it depends on your strategy, right? So mm -hmm. um, it's really, really important to, to know what kind of strategy you're going after. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then just kind of go for it. I mean, you know, j just to share with you, I have multiple channels. So if you go onto my Aaron Chen channel, uh -huh. you'll find that I, I have 17,000 subscribers, but I have four other channels where I do different things. I review products. I review different courses. I do different things. Right. And some of those ch channels only have 1000 subscribers, but I'm generating 20, 30, 40 leads a day, every single day with those channels. Do you know what I mean? So again, it's not about, it's not about the vanity metrics. It's about the strategy. And when you have the strategy, right, then that's how you make a lot of money and that's how you do well. But if you're trying to become a superstar, uh, YouTuber like PewDiePie, then, you know, it's impossible. You can't do it. It's like, <laughs> you're not, you're not going to do that. It's just, it's, it's too difficult in this day and age to amass 30, 30 million subscribers like that. You know, it, you have to, you had, you had to have been in the game 10 years ago in order to do that. It's so hard to do that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that you have to create a viral video in order to get big on YouTube to, to create constant viral videos on YouTube and get big like that. The, your chances are so slim. It's so difficult to do that. So that shouldn't be the strategy that you should be going after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should become a marketer, not an influencer, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome stuff, man. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Uh, thank you for, uh, thank you for sharing this guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, you'll find, um, our own resources below this video, uh, the trainings and, uh, his YouTube channel as well. So I recommend you to subscribe. You'll learn a lot. And um, yeah, Aaron, thank you for sharing uh, a lot of great insights. And um, yeah, <laughs> thanks, man. No problem. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, yeah. thanks for uh, thanks for the interview. And um, I hope we get to speak soon. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Aaron. Take care. Bye. Bye.